Uh, one of the trends of uh, our theme this year of the next 10 years is obviously the uh, Internet of Things. And uh, there is one company that, is, uh, that everybody talks about uh, on this theme. We already had Tony Fadell last year of Nest. Since then, he had this thermostat. This, since then, he launched a new product. And uh, I hear has plans to many, many more. So I'm very pleased to uh, hear again about Tony Fadell, the CEO and founder of Nest Labs, which is going to be huge. It's everywhere already there if you don't have a Nest. You're, uh, you're, not, you're not totally not uh, connected anymore. And Stuart Dredge from The Guardian. Welcome back, Tony. Hey, it's great to be back. Thanks, Louis. Hi, everybody. Hey. Morning. Bonjour. 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 Hello. Hello. Wow, full house. Hello. It's great to see everybody. Yeah, thank you. Well, Grant, well, look, um, we're here to talk about Nest. Um, if I was going to show you a video of my smoke alarm, it would start with me burning toast, it would end in the smoke alarm screeching, me screeching, waving a newspaper around, and everyone being unhappy. And then probably ripping it off the ceiling. Yeah, that's, that's the British national dance now, dancing around the smoke alarm, waving a newspaper. <laughs> but you have a video, I believe, that shows there could be a different way of doing things. So we're going to see that first, and we're going to talk. So uh, let's see your video. Great. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a crazy idea. Yeah, a, okay. a smoke and seal alarm. <laughs> Clapping in that. <laughs> so, look, I mean, people obviously know you from your role at Apple with your iPod and iPhone, and they maybe think of Nest as the thermostat company when you came out, but this is the next thing. So how is, how is Nest going? What's this show about what the company's vision is? So, yeah, last year, you know, when we were here and we were talking about the thermostat, um, we were already working on Nest Protect, and everyone kept asking me, what, what, what's Nest? And I said, uh, we're a humble thermostat company. That's what we make. And, and, and behind the scenes, what we've, already, what we've always thought is that Nest is all about creating uh, and re-innovating unloved products in the home. There are many products that we grew up with that are exactly the same as when I was a kid. And that was a thermostat and a smoke detector. If you look around, though, your home, and you look at the telephone, it's totally changed. And in some cases, you don't even have the telephone that you had when you were a kid. Or the telephone, or the, the TV is totally changed, and now we're on to 4K. These things have dramatically changed, but why do these other things in the home not change? And that's what Nest is all about, is going after and reinventing those products and creating new experiences that we've never seen before. Because we, these are products that are just not trivial or easy or something neat like you know entertainment or music everywhere these are things you must buy for your home the government in some cases mandate that you buy them in your home and why can't we get products that we love to do we have to purchase them so that's what nest is all about mm. and i think that in the um in the piece of this this session actually it says oh you've got 10 products you could do <coughs> um i'm guessing you're not going to talk about them now but 
What are the common threads between these products? Well, if you, look at, if you look at the products themselves, the first thing is that they have to be highly differentiated from what they are today, right? So what you were be, be able to purchase beforehand. And so when you think about it, uh, you have to look at the technology and say how a technology that we have, and that's connectivity, and you hear of the Internet of Things, which don't get me started on that term, but the Internet of Things uh, and how can we change the, fundamentally the experience when the cell phone, the smartphone in your hand is with you at all times? How does your life change? And we just heard from multiple speakers here. You're going to have that device with you at all times. How does your person change? How does your car change? How does your home change? And so when we look at that, we look at products you must have and how they're affected by the smartphone and how they can totally change the um, uh, change the experience when it is connected. Uh, so th that's kind of our philosophy in a, of how we look at uh, products to, to reinvent. And you're kind of going into these markets where there are big established companies, I suppose. You're disrupting some very long established but very staid players. Yeah, in, in many ways, the, the markets that we're going after, uh, you know, have one, they're either monopoly uh, markets or they're duopoly markets, where, you know, just people fight over market, you know, like 55 points of market share versus 45 and those kinds of things. So we come in and, and you know, most of the time they really don't like us. Uh, we, last time we were here, we talked about, you know, one of the companies suing us. Now we're getting sued by a second company. And why? Because... They don't like some little upstart coming in, disturbing some business that they've had for 40 years, that they've been able to do the same thing over and over and over, and never were challenged. So what they do is instead of innovating, they litigate. So if you can't innovate, litigate. And this is kind of a, it, well, it's, I guess it's part of the course. I mean, Apple gets sued all the time for stuff. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. I, I mean, is it a bit discouraging looking ahead, thinking, is every market you go into, there'll be some big player saying, we can't do better than this, so we're going to sue you? Or? If any startup <laughs> is going to truly disrupt a revenue stream that's already been existing for multiple years, and decades in some cases, if they don't think that patents will be thrown at them or weird things, we've seen all kinds of weird things that our competitors have tried at us. Very dirty tactics, incredibly dirty, because they want to keep us out. If you're a startup trying to go after a revenue stream that has been established, trust me, they will throw everything at the, they, under the sun at you. And a lot of it is not cool. Like, you've seen it. You've seen customer reviews. You look at the customer reviews for our products, and you go, this seems really weird when you read the review. One star this. And you go, and we've, we've been able to trace it back to plants. Literally, these are the kind of things they do. So you have to, you have to uh, be very cognizant when you go into these markets, what can happen. Um, and you know, we do a good job of defending ourselves. Luckily, our, our general counsel, he was uh, uh, the chief intellectual property officer for Apple for a decade. And so he and I got sued every year, year in and year out. And we saw all these dirty games because you know Sony or Nokia or whatever, they just didn't like us showing up. Right, and so luckily I have him on our team, and he's just brilliant, and he, you know, brings us that confidence, that bold confidence to stay in our lane, as you just heard, to make it happen, and to bring these innovations uh, to light. And this is kind of an interesting thing because there's, there's startups out there who are doing things in different areas, people making locks, people making hardware, crowdfunding it because they got a nice product, but. Are they thinking about this kind of stuff? Are they thinking about having lawyers in and having... You, you know, <laughs> you know the, the, the great thing of you know, age is that you have, you have the wisdom, and you've been in the market long enough, to know that these, are, these things come at you, and you have to be armed for yourself. When you see a lot of these uh, you know, Kickstarter projects or Indiegogo projects, they're made, you know, there's passionate people behind them, but they not necessarily always understand what they're getting themselves in for, so they have interesting ideas. And number one is they're you know, like, okay, I'm going to get in and I'm going to you know, build one. And you can usually build one of anything, but then to manufacture something, mm -hmm. right, and make 100,000 even, is a whole other scale of, of problems that you have to face. And then after that, once you get to market, then you have to deal with all these kinds of uh, litigation issues or other kinds of competitive issues. And what happens is, is that you, know, you really have to plan maybe a year or two years in advance for what could be coming. Because when you just get the product shipped, 
you just got started. Most people are like, whoa, we got there. We made the goal. No, you're just getting started. And if you didn't plant those seeds early enough mm -hmm. to be able to defend yourself or manufacture properly, you're going to have a whole word, a world of hurt. Just after you think you've made it, you're exhausted, you're almost out of money, and now the game begins, right? Whether it's marketing, uh, legal, or what have you. And so at Nest, what we did was very early on was we made sure we made, uh, put in a ton of patents Right? We were patenting things. We have uh, over 100 patents already issued. We have 200 on file right now. We have another 200 that are going to be on file. These are the kind of things you have to do when you're going to disrupt <coughs> major revenue streams. Mm. Okay. I mean, can we talk about marketing? Because obviously you have a nice ad. But how are you marketing these things when even a smoke alarm, a smoke alarm can save your life. It's very important. But people don't think about it. They don't go and buy one. They leave it, even not working for, for years at a time. How are you... How are you convincing people that they, they need to think about these things, let alone sure, by yours? Sure, sure. Well, th that's the other thing about, you know, uh, the, the companies entering this space is that the first thing is you need to have a differentiated product, and hopefully it's highly differentiated, and hopefully something like Nest Protect, like you saw, is a, a highly differentiated product. And so that's great, and this audience can learn about those things, right? And, 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 and kind of the tech set can learn about those new products, and that's great. But at the end of the day, these are mass market products. These have to go into every home, every business, all around the world. And when you look at something like a, a smoke alarm, you know, most people are not thinking about them. They're not a daily, you know, daily thought. You, most of the time is unless they're just beeping at you and waking you up in the middle of the night, you don't consider them. So what you have to do when you have a, a differentiated product is you also have to have disruptive marketing. You have to look at it very, very differently um, and make sure you communicate to your audience what the problem is, what the benefits of your, your, your solution are, and make sure they see it the way they see the, the wonderful marketing that you see for smartphones or TVs or other consumer products. You have to, and you have to allow them to also purchase it where they would normally purchase those types of products, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you didn't see a, a smoke alarm, smoke and seal alarm, or a thermostat at a John Lewis store mm. or maybe an Apple store. It's very, very different way. You'd go into the you know, a dark corner of some large big box something or other with a, you know, dust on the, on the products themselves and you'd go and find it only when you really needed it, mm -hmm. as opposed to exploring it and maybe possibly upgrading your home for those things. And you're going to do it where you typically shop. Mm -hmm. So disruptive marketing, disruptive product, and disruptive retail are all essential in doing these kinds of, uh, bringing these kinds of innovations to, to the market in a hopefully a successful way. Mm. And it's strange because by tech standards, thinking of you're in John Lewis, which is a very much a family store in the UK, it sounds quite basic, but that's where my mum shops and that's where she finds out about tablets now, where she finds out about... Exactly. Sort of so it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's, it's quite a big leap for that kind of tech product. Yeah, I, I was in John Lewis just the other day and here we are, you know, here's Nest Protect and right next to it is a gorgeous, yeah, I think it was Sony or Samsung 4K TV right next to each other. I'm like, yes, all right, we made it. You know, like when you see these kinds of things and you see, you know, a thermostat in the US or whatever and you're like, and it's becoming top of mind and, and people are having these energy discussions or these safety discussions because now in, in France, uh, next year, it's going to be mandated in every home and every business that you have smoke detection and smoke alarms in your home. So these are the kind of things that we just love to see and we think we're at the right place at the right time mm. ag uh, against the in, entrenched incumbents. Mm. Okay. I mean, can we talk about security? Because if a week ago you told me, talked to me about is the NSA going to be wanting my smoke detector data? I would, have laughed, but I would have laughed at the same idea of them wanting my Xbox Live data, and then that story breaks. So how are you thinking about how is this getting smarter, but also getting more hackable, more surveillable? Is that something that's in your thoughts? Well, well absolutely. You know, when you're talking about data in the home, data in the home or, or, or use, you know, your, your home, uh, how you use your home, when you're home, when you're away, how many times did you really burn the toast? Uh, you know, how much energy do you really use? Those are very private things. And uh, we, at Nest, we made sure that at the, from the beginning, if you start connecting these things and you can get access to them from anywhere, what could people do with that data if they get, you know, gain access to it? And so we made sure that we put in, you know, bank level security, 
from our, across our network. We made sure all of our software updates are encrypted. We made sure that we've done everything we possibly can, and we even have our own hacker team inside. A hacker team going out hacking our devices and our services and putting in privacy policies and special du dual keys where if anyone wants to get personal data out of somebody's home, they have to come talk to me or the, our co-founder and give us a reason and show us what, exactly what they're doing before they get access to personal data. So these things, it's very, very private. And we want to make sure that the only, if, if people can't trust our brand, this market, or at least our, our products, are never going to sell. And we believe that the Internet of Things, or these connected homes, are not going to take off if people can't trust it. Mm. And so it's, it's, it's baked into our culture. It's, there's, it didn't get added later. Mm. And I, you I mentioned the, coming, the personal... I guess there's, there's also an open opportunity here in that you've got, you've got an API coming up, do everything tap into it. I was thinking about homes where if I have a grandparent, it might be nice for me to know if they've been walking under the smoke detector, if they're moving around right. the house. So, exactly. So you're thinking about the openness and sharing of it, as well as the security then? Yeah, you, you know, security, whenever anything's connected, it has to be secure. But at the same time, you know, I, I actually do this with my parents. I have access to their Nest products in their home and, I, and their account, and I can actually make sure that, you know, maybe they're having an issue with the temperature there, and I can, from afar, figure out what's going on. Or maybe they have a, a CO leak or something like that, and the Nest Protect will tell me. So we, we definitely, you know, sometimes you want to take care of your kids, sometimes you want to take care of your parents, your parents want to take care of you. And in this connected world, you're going to air connected home thing, this is where you're going to see this, this new level of functionality we've never seen before. You know, be, until, to, uh, until Nest Protect, unless you had a really sophisticated security system that you're paying thousands of dollars for over a, a, of the lifespan of the product, you never knew that there was a fire in your house or there was CO detection. Now, you put in Nest Protect, and that, from anywhere in the world, you can know what's going on in your house. You can see the levels. You can see what's going on. I think that gives a level of comfort. So when you're traveling or what have you, you can make sure you're using less energy because of your thermostat because it's right there in your hand. And what happens is, is whenever we're, um, you know, because we, we have to have service maintenance sometimes for maybe a few minutes a, a month or something like that to update the service, we get people in that a few minutes going, what's wrong with the service? Why is it down? I need to see my thermostat now. And it's, it's amazing to me. We went from people not caring about thermostats, not caring about smoke alarms, and then all of a sudden, you know, they didn't even know anything about it. And then as soon as it was connected, like literally, if they couldn't get access to it at any time they wanted, they go crazy. We get it on Twitter. What's wrong? Go fix it. We need it now. And it's, I was like, this is wonderful. It's wonderful in a way that people have been yearning for these kinds of things. They want to have this peace of mind that everything's going okay. And that's what you get with connectivity and, and with the, the smartphone in your pocket at all times. So it's really, it's really, really nice to see. It's weird. I could visit people peace of mind when they have it on. When it goes, they get very... I mean, I get when Gmail goes down, I just fall to pieces. I mean, exactly. People, when, when they have this new thing that's great, they then... Pull apart when they have it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's not just the first month. That's the thing. We're finding our users, because we've been around now two years in the States, mm -hmm. that the actual the usage of our app is going up per user. Most people say, oh, oh, it's going down. You know, you're going to have people, it's going to be a fad for the first month or two months. Mm -hmm. That's not what's happening. We see more people using it more, our, our app much more often as it gets longer, especially as we have Nest Protect, they're using it more often. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, it's, it's very counterintuitive. You know, investors came to, you know, when we went to investors on in the early days, they're like, oh, it's going to be beautiful. They're going to put it on the wall. They're going to do a couple things and they're never going to interact with it ever again. Mm -hmm. They actually interact with it more. Mm. They want to they're, they're, they want to make sure they're saving energy. They want to see how things are going. So it's it's pretty amazing from what we thought just a few years ago to mm. what's actually happening. Um, it's tremendous. And you know some some other things that are uh, uh, interesting to us is we've only been shipping Nest Protect now in the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. for only about 12 days. About 12 days. So we're only shipping, in general, to about three countries en masse, and we have a few other countries we'll ship from, you know, from, from the UK into the EU, but not many. When I woke up the other day and I asked for a new stat, last year I said thermostats, we were about 50 countries for thermostats, uh, where we don't even sell the thermostats. Today, it's 96 countries have Nest thermostats installed where we don't even sell them. Mm. Nest Protect, in only nine days, when I looked at the data, we were already in over 40 countries where we didn't ship in nine days. 
And I was just floored. I was like, okay, it'll be three countries. It'll be 10 countries. 40 countries in 90 days. I was like, it blew my mind. Mm. It took us a whole year to get to 50 countries with the thermostat and only nine days with Nest Protect. So that, I was like, I was, I was blown away. Mm, goodness. Well, for my final question, because we're about to finish, is you have this API coming up. There are a lot of startups and developers maybe thinking, I could do a Snapchat, make my fortune. Do you think more developers are going to be saying, I'm going to look at the home, look at these, some of these unfashionable things and, and go? Is that, is that a big opportunity for the people in here who are thinking, what should I do? Uh, I, absolutely. There's, there's, you know, as a, uh, you know, a, as a product supplier, we can only do so many, th we can only do so many things. And we have to focus on the broad, um, the broader market and what they want to do with it and want to get access to it. And I have all these investors that we have or, or friends of investors, and they all have like, you know, multiple homes and they have 20 thermostats and 100 smoke detectors and all this stuff. And I'm like, they're like, your app doesn't support that. I'm like, well, guess what? You are on the long tail of things. You're way over here. I'm never going to make a product for that, or I'm not going to make software services, or they want some funky thing. And there's all kinds of people who use their homes in all different ways, and we're not going to be able to address all of that. Mm -hmm. And that's why we opened up uh, our developer program to take submissions um, back in early October. And uh, we got 1,000 applicants in literally uh, less than a week, and now we have almost 10,000, well, almost 10,000 applicants right now. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to be talking more about that, but we truly believe that there are a lot of things that we're not going to be able to do and we're not going to be able to build. And uh, we want to work with partners and, and developers who have other great ideas and, and bring them in, in, in the mix. Look, your iPhone, right, was great when it came out. We saw that video just a little while ago about, you know, it had five apps on it when it first shipped. And, it t and one year later, then all of a sudden there's over a million apps right, for the device. So what, what's going to be, be your home? I bet you it may be not that big of an opportunity, but I'm sure it's pretty close to it. So absolutely, I think th this audience, uh, these great brains here, you're going to be able to come up with things we haven't even imagined yet. Thanks, Seth. Well, look, we're out of time, so um, thank you very much. And, All right, uh, yeah, thank enjoy you, Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a great show. Thanks, Louis. <laughs> Thanks, Geraldine. Thank you, Tony. We're glad to have you. Thank Again. you. It's great to be here. Please come back next year. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Absolument. Absolutely. Your French is getting great. My wife wants me to come back all the time. Perfect. So you'll see me many, many more times. Excellent. If you'll Tony. let me come. That's our secret here. That's how we get speakers. We <laughs> they like to hang out in Paris.